in uh, the Southwood Station area rather than the Ziegler area. So it's, uh, and as you can see, the cost is, is significantly less because it's, it's much scaled back. And that's essentially the, the end of the presentation. Yes, sir. Yeah, Paul, you didn't mention anything about a benefit assessment on any of those new lines that you're putting in to the property owners. Uh, that's a township uh, decision in terms of uh, whether they, they charge a front foot assessment or whatever. Um, you, the township needs to look at what's this going to cost and uh, assess uh, property owners accordingly um, in terms of paying for uh, the service that they, they receive. The other question, too, that I have for that is uh, the Sahaki track, which is across the street on Little Road. The developer was in in November talking about putting 30 homes in there. So, if you're talking about 46 to 48 at Melbourne, you're going to have a possibility of another 30. All right, I'm not aware of that development, and uh, certainly, uh, if he if he's serious about building additional homes out there, he needs to you know get with the township in terms of you know come out with a plan and how he's going to how he's going to serve. Um, that portion of the township back in the Little Road, um, this development was set by the township back in 2008. It says you're going to connect a public sewer to get the density that you want. I don't know about this. Development. I believe it's the same. They were both at the same time period. All right. So I would assume that they would say, hey, you have to connect a public sewer. I'm going to say
Well, we're well aware as residents that in 2017, September, there was a lot of controversy over the uh, Melbourne Hill intersect, which is your option number two there. Um, that said, um, in looking at options, say option number four, would it not be prudent for the township to uh, drive more exacting data? So if we are working around the idea that DOP <coughs> has uh, you know, an affinity to, to come and lay uh, negative options on our township, wouldn't it be oh, I, I, involved I, I, with getting good data to support oh, that's why we're going ahead with this? Oh, uh, right now, all the township has is preliminary approval of this development. That I would go back to the developer and say, we haven't made a decision yet. We still are in fact-finding uh, phases. We've given you preliminary approval. We know that you're going to build 48 homes. However, we haven't made a decision how that those 48 homes are going to connect to this sanitary sewer. And one of the things that I would be going back to the developer with is uh, I want you to analyze the Delphi station, because both of his options that he's put forward have indicated that he's going to connect and <coughs> impact the Delphi station, but nobody seems to know what that impact is. And before the township makes any decision, I would say that you need to, to have that information. And you need the current flow data to give to the developer's engineer and say, analyze this and find out what your impact is going to be. So, and to extend the bill off what you're saying, I, I believe that was a very good suggestion and recommendation, but we also have suspect systems that need to be addressed. Apparently there's one system that has been recursive yes. that we want to you know, service and, and try to rectify. No, but you can't force the developer to analyze your resident problems, but you can force them to analyze what his impact would be. You as a township then can piggyback on that and say, Okay, we understand right at 48, and we know what that impact is going to be because you've done the analysis. But we're going to add a dozen on our own. So you add that to what he gives you, and now you've got a good, clear picture of what the impact is going to be at Delphi. So your recommendation would be that we do need to get more exacting data about what systems are in failure or potentially in failure that would drive that kind of oh, I, I definitely would movement forward. I definitely would try to identify homeowners that are definitely in failure or close to failure that we're going to need to connect. And I think the 537, that was part of what should have been done when the 537 was approved, uh, that you've identified those parcels that are in process. Well, since the but, adopt oh, I'm sorry. But you also then, with that information, you need to then, you know, Look at what the developer's impact is as well. Yeah, well, it's, since, it's, yeah. since the adoption of 537, we, we instituted a maintenance program on our on site systems, which we have a reporting system. But right. apparently, we don't use that as a mechanism to drive what a system in failure is. We only use that as a mechanism to drive who's pumped down. So, um, I guess what I'm exploring here is how does the township actually get that information that we need to know? Uh, we, with the pumping, now, I don't know what your ordinance says, but with the pumping, and the, the township has the ability to revise that ordinance too, um, you can get full reports in terms of a pumper when it pumps the tank. Let's, for argument, say, say that the tank is 1,000 gallons. And the pumper says, well, I pumped 1,500 gallons out. You can require a pumper to tell you that yes, he pumped it, and how much he pumped, and what size the tank is. They're all within her purview of being able to do it. And one, one of the townships that I'm familiar with is Bedminster. And it's over in Bucks County, but they have a very detailed septic management program over there, and they require the pumpers to report a great deal of information. That information tells you if a pumper is pumping uh, 1,500 gallons out of a 1,000 gallon tank. Guess what? That septic system is underwater, and you're pumping a lot of groundwater. That means that system is in trouble. So, so I'm understanding you say we do need more raw Just, data just a ticket that says the system is pumped is not enough. Okay, thank you. Yes. I
outside my system pumped. Okay. And it says, this is the size of the tank, this is how many gallons it, we pumped out, was there any malfunctions, so that information is already on file with the township. I asked that question apparently, the township doesn't maintain Well, I, I have a form that I just sent it in. I just got my hand. I'm happy to give you a copy of it. No, I, I've got my hand. But it, 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 it's pretty detailed. They want to know whether or not, the, the, you know, is there right. education? Well, we're looking yeah. for data that uh, apparently is satisfactory to the health department or DEP. Yeah. And I guess well, that is what you want. It's whatever data that you want, you know, and, and as long as it's within the purview of the department. One of the challenges was you 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 have you have your own consulting business, and one of the things you do is inspect septic systems. Yes. You have a different level of qualification to do that inspection than uh, the gentleman who, who, who runs the hose and pumps the tank. So, uh, what the discussion that Phil and I had previously, forgive me, tell me how it's true, um, was. The, the report from the hauler is not necessarily the kind of inspection report that you get from somebody with an SEO license. It's not a comprehensive. That, that's true. However, um, in the Bedminster case, they have a full eight and a half by 11 page that the pumper is required to fill out. You can put that in your ordinance and say, this is the form you use. When the tank is pumped, make sure the pumper fills this information out so that you know what's, what's going on. Uh, if the ordinance includes that kind of information, great. The downside is somebody at the township level, one of your secretaries, or maybe somebody in the prior, has to then sit down and correlate all that information that comes in. Uh, the property owner has his tank pumped, he delivers that ticket to, the, to the, uh, the township, and if the township secretary or the filing clerk or whomever just takes it and says, gee, thanks, Mr. Smith, and files it away. It doesn't do you any good. It needs to be put in a computer, some kind of spreadsheet, something, so that you can see what's happening. And that, that's work on the township part. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, my name's Gail. Uh, I don't know if you never see any hard data. You've given us some reasons to believe there could be failing systems. Of course, everything will fail eventually. That's life. My roof is going to leak, but eventually, or I'll need a replacement. So, but what are, where are the, the figures? We're just hearing they're out there somewhere, but we never see them. We never see the amount of which household it is. We never, we, we know there's soils underneath many households that have some issues could have some issues, but it's all very vague. All right. Well, the problem with sewage systems is most of the system, if not all of it, is underground, and you don't see it. And until it pops up on the surface, um, yeah. you don't you don't know that you have a problem. You that may have had a problem for years, but you don't know it until it comes to the surface. That sounds However, cool. as a homeowner, understanding how the systems work and Having them pumped on a regular basis goes a long way to understanding how the systems work and how well they are functioning. A homeowner that stays interested in what the pumper does, it will go a long way to knowing what the condition of your system is. I've had homeowners that I go out and inspect systems, and they say, I just tell the guy to pump it. And they never know, and then there's a problem. Because when you open the tank, you ask the, the, uh, the pumper, is the tank surcharged? Is it above the level that it's supposed to be? When you pump it, you pump more water out than what the tank theoretically holds. There are indicators out there that will tell you that your system is in, in seasonal stress or a problem, but the homeowner needs to be conscious of how these work and pay attention. Um, you know, you can drive your car down the road until the yellow light comes on and says you need oil, but the, the, the action is to be proactive and check your oil every couple of times you fill up the gas to make sure that you don't run out. Yeah, I agree with you, but you're telling us there are these failing systems, but we never know where they are. Where, where is that data? Like, where is, is the data yellow that's yellow and the failing and the red system? <coughs> well, anybody can make a line. That's not data. A line there, 
No, 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 no. The reason why people do not want to say anything is because as soon as you have a family system and the people see it themselves in their yard, they will not call. Hold on. They will not call. The, the, they will not call the county because when the county comes out and says, "Listen, you're failing. Your system's failing. You're going to have to put a new system in." And they write that in there. They're scared because the, their county's going to say, "There's no sewer near yet. You, it's going to cost you thirty thousand dollars." I agree with you, Terry. This is why Where people, is the data? This is why people are not saying it. Well, then. earlier, 
on page 16 of the approved DEP plan regarding the Delphi Home Station, because that is the moment uh, in many of these options. The pump station at Delphi um, has a design flow rate of 175,000, I mean, pardon, 175 gallons per minute. Utilizing runtime records, the station was estimated to convey an average flow of 26,130 gallons per day. Average flow rates of up to 84,000 gallons per day can easily be handled by this station, assuming flow rate uh, pumps run a third of each day, which corresponds with your like eight to ten hours. Okay, that means that there's an additional 60,000 gallon capacity based on these numbers in the Act 537 plan. Okay. 60,000 gallon capacity for that plan only running a third of the day. Okay, DEP for permitting uh, requirements says new construction is 400 gallons per EDU, and that represents one house. No, so these, exactly. well, not exactly, it is it's not an exact size, but for permitting for new construction, it's, it's usually, not in public, it's not usually in public sewer. Depending upon, so it's about 400 gallons. So, so you're looking at connecting with the 60,000 gallons of additional capacity that can easily hand be handled into this plan that you could hook in perhaps maybe 150 to 200 homes. So you keep saying, oh, if only Delphi can have accepted. It. it seems like based on these numbers, and it would be advantageous to get current data, but nothing else is connected to Delphi. So so these this 26,000 gallon average is probably pretty close. So are you against no, I'm saying you just utilize the infrastructure we already have and we've already paid for, and rather than looking at spending four hundred and fifty thousand dollars on brand new mining station, this perhaps can be handled. Well, I, you're correct. It perhaps can be. I don't know that. No, but I'm just saying. It's done, done that data is and is and this is where they find it. Under and it is handled capacity, Mr. Hills. A uh, problem could be fixed with a low pressure line off of uh, Ziegler's Mill Road. The Delphi can handle that capacity. And the individuals on Southwood Station can also have their solution fixed with grinder pumps and a low pressure system. And Delphi can handle it. And it's about half the cost of what you know, you're proposing for many of the options. I'm saying utilize the stuff we have now and let's get along with it and get rid of the construction so we can get that hooked into our system. Didn't you say the low pressure systems are, aren't capable of working because of the soil? No, no, no. 